Hi, Joe Doyle here. As a former bricklayer turned property investor, I would not be where I am today if I didn't first learn the art of business. Nowadays, a big part of my life is helping other tradesmen grow their business and create wealth by sharing my knowledge, insights, and experience. Welcome to the Tradesman Survival Guide podcast. All of the strategies discussed in my podcast are taken directly from my book, The Tradesman Survival Guide, which is available at www.joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG. TSG, of course, being Tradesman Survival Guide. So, guys, welcome to today's episode. So, we're chatting away here today with Dara Carolyn. Um, and Dara has become a client of mine over the last little while. And there's a couple of things that, that Dara brings up in the call here. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a little bit of uh, context or a bit of pre-framing for them. Um, Dara says that he takes his break-even point every week from the job or whatever the case may be, right? Now, we've got a system where we're running with our, with our clients, right? Where our break-even point includes our profit. It includes our minimum profit. So I'm pushing all my clients to the point where they can make an absolute clear profit of 500 euros per day after everybody is paid and everything is said and done and that 500 euros a day equates to 10,000 euros a month if you do it 20 days in a row and what we do is we don't include the profit as an optional extra that we add on at the end we factor in from the very start and we factor in as part of our break even point so if someone if any of my clients are telling me they're breaking even the break even basically means they're up 500 quid every day so when you hear him talk about the break even point our break even point chances are is different from your break even point because we're we're breaking even on a, on a plus of 10k per month um, another thing he talks about is his zero so we've got a concept as well another thing we teach is increase your zero so you see people they stop spending at zero or as you'll hear in the call here some people stop spending at minus 10 or minus 15 whatever their overdraft amount is but the fact that they stopped spending that, if they didn't want to stop spending, they could keep borrowing and keep moving on. So it's it's crazy stuff. So what we do is we get guys to increase their zero. And what Darren is doing now is he's putting his zero back at 10K. So before he got talking to ourselves there, his zero was in a minus. Now his zero is a zero. And in the next couple of weeks, his zero will be 5K. So what that means is whenever he gets 5K left in the bank, he'll stop spending. And we'll increase that now over the next little while from self from five grand, probably up to around 20 grand. And it just gives you a bit of financial security as things are going on in the business and allows you the, the comfort to have to pay for unexpected things and not go into overdrafts and not need loans if, if it's a case that something like that is needed. So hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. Let's crack on with the show. Dara, good afternoon, my friend. How how was the farm? What's happening? All good here. All good here. Anyway, today is uh, I think today is like the official hangover day for many people of the of the country, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about them. We've no hangover. I was working yesterday. So. Well, <laughs> well, come here. I suppose we're we're different. We're we're in the we're in the elite circle. They don't know what we know. So the average people will be. Hung- uh, what would you say that uh, a higher proportion of average people will be hung over today than normal? You know, what what are we? Well, at? I don't even. I, I think it's, I think it's weird though this year as well. Like you know, because like pubs and all weren't open, there wouldn't have been as much drinking going on yesterday as it normally have been. Like yeah, of course. Yeah, I you think, know, yeah. no parades or anything to go by or anything like that. So. Yeah, like it was a bit weird. We were just kind of, well, I went to the park with the baby. Actually, I was walking in the morning and then I went to the park with the baby and uh, I just, I was just wondering, was there anything? They were actually, they were playing bingo on the street. They were all over, all around the estate. That was a bit, that was a bit of crack. Now, I didn't, I didn't get involved myself. I went back in and I, I done a bit of walk just to tip away, you know, but now it's, it's all good. So come here, listen, let's, uh, let's just dive in. I'm going to do a little recap here, right? Um, So, uh, 18th of Jan. We spoke the 18th of Jan and the 20th of Jan, right? The 18th of Jan, uh, yeah. Dara has now for the first time got his creditors cleared and is almost out of the overdraft and is confident about hitting the first milestone on 19th of Feb. Um, predicts 10k in the bank and overdraft clear by the end of Jan. And then on the 20th of Feb, uh, Dara has played a stormer for the past seven weeks, uh, has cleared the overdraft and also hit the milestone for the amount of of milestone number one he is a beast so how have we been getting on actually it's exactly a month now since we spoke so how are we getting on from the 20th of february till the 18th of march 
Yeah, so the only thing is there's this little bit of, you know, this little voice, as I said in the email last week, there's this little voice in my head saying, are you sure this is going to be able to keep going? Uh, like, the job I'm on at the moment is, look, it's great. The, the, I know the money's good off it, and, you know, it's been it's been kind of difficult for me because she's, she's not, doesn't have anything really in a contract, but I, I worked with her for the last couple of years. Like, she's given me four or five hundred thousand over the last couple of years, you know what I mean? So, there's no, I've no fear in not getting paid or anything like that, but it's just this thing, is she actually going to run out money before I have her job finished? That's, you know, so I have to, I have to spend a day just going through all the numbers and kind of nearly reprice the job from today till I'm finished. Why would you to think, make sure? Why would you think she's going to run out money all of a sudden? Right, it's 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 not it's not that I think she's going to run out of money. So, like originally, this job was priced about one hundred seventy grand, right? right? And she said, "No, no, no, that's too expensive. Can I buy some of the materials myself?" Because she's she's has a has a brother that lives up the north, and he was bringing stuff down. So I was like, "Grand." So I read on the numbers as labour only. I actually gave her a kind of a rough list of into uh, uh, materials needed, and I says. You knock yourself out there and go and price them, and done done everything as labour only. And ah, uh, she says now I can't. I don't know whether I can get it. So it was like then it's up in the air again. It went went from one hundred and seventy down to about a hundred. Then it went back up to one hundred and forty two, and we never actually settled on the final number. Right, this is scary now, all right, yeah. So it's it's not, but it's not that it's scary because. Scary for me, that if, we, if we're doing a job and we don't know the numbers, you know? Yeah, so that that's the bit that's kind of stressing me a little bit, right? Um, now, that's what I, 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 I'm off. Hopefully, I actually have Christy here next Tuesday. And if he's here putting in pipes in the floor, I won't be here because I can just leave him here and I can go away and sit in the office. It'd be great. Yeah. Um, and the lads can be busy doing something, but I can be I can be I can be somewhere else, which is grand. Um I find when I'm here I get asked far too many questions. Right, very good. Um so if I'm not here, I don't get asked the questions and people just get on and do their job. Yeah. Um sense. so what I have to do like is just finalise what I'll need to finish the job. What I've actually taken off the job, yeah, and see see where I am exactly because with the last three weeks I've been busting me hole just to keep it tipping along because I want to I, I I'm supposed to start another one now in in first week in April or the second week in April, so I know that this is it's not that it's dragging on but you know the way old houses get it can be money pits <laughs> different things the, possible, yeah isn't it? yeah. But look at this woman. I know that she'd be happy for me that if she has to stop at a certain point, that she'd be happy for me to go away till she gets the few quid to 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 come back and finish it. So there's no. She she's very good. Like the communication with her is great. Like if I say to her, like if I was to say even just send her a text now, I need six and a half grand tomorrow. I'll have six and a half grand here tomorrow. You know so. But if I say to her, well, look, it, I'm going to need 20 grand to finish the job. And she says to me, well, I only have 15. I can then say to her, okay, well, I'll do 15,000 euros worth of work. Yes. And when you have the other five grand, I can come back and finish it. You don't want to finish it and let her owe it to you. You don't want to finish it and go looking for money and she says she hasn't got it. Like, So it depends on how I am in the bank. If it's not very much, what I might do, because I have to come back here at the end of the year and do another extension for her. Yes. D- d- anyway, so, you know, with that in mind, if there was something that I could finish just to get this one job finished and then go back to her and start a new job and thing and I was only out two or three grand, I'd probably leave her off the two or three grand and get it off her at the end of the year. Because I, I know her that long, I'd be comfortable doing that. If I, you know, if if I had, if I wasn't, if it was profit that I didn't really need to 
Right. Put can, anywhere. Can, you I, can I, mean? I just dive in just ask you a few questions on that, yeah? Yeah. And bear in mind, yeah. right, tell me where I'm wrong and what I'm going to say here, right? So okay. you've been getting a certain result in your business for the last number of years, right? For, for whatever yeah. reason, right? And then pretty much from the start of this year onwards, t- things have took a change for the better for you, yeah? So not 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 really, right? Okay. Tell so, me. um, like it was a partnership, myself and my brother. Yes. Right, and for for personal reason, what have you? He he decided that he 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 had enough, right? Yeah. So, look, we owed about I reckon about eighty grand at that stage. Yeah. Between business loans, overdraft. And creditors was probably somewhere in the region of about fifty. Right. Right. Now we had personal guarantees on the overdraft and the loans, so winding up wasn't really an option because I didn't have thirty grand to give to the bank. Yes. You know, and and born the born me creditors then. You know, I'm not bent that way. Yeah, of course. I'd yeah. sooner, I'd, I'd, I'd sooner be work through it. You know, so. I thought about winding up and I t- we looked into it and all that, discovered it wasn't going to work for me. So I just says, right, fucking head down, arse up, crack on, pay people as I can, right? And most people were great with that. The banks, because it was a monthly thing, it was fine. Um, COVID actually was great last year because the banks gave a couple of months uh, grace on a few loans, you know, just took the pressure off on a monthly basis. Yes. Um, and just over the two years, I got from that place where I was of nearly minus 80 to zero there. In yeah, January. to break even, yeah. yeah. Now, I still had the overdraft in January. Right. Because my my as as we talked about and it was only something that I learned from you, my zero was actually minus ten. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So then with with your help then I was able to go and get my zero from minus ten to actually being zero. Yes. <laughs> and with me next on the on the ninth of April my zero is gonna be five grand. Brilliant. Yeah. And and that's you know so like it wasn't just a sudden from from November. But what what I what I was gonna say to you right, you've been getting a result right, which is yeah. basically you be up until you've been getting a certain result for a long time, which was basically just nothing extra in the bank because you are clearing off all this residual right, and exactly, yeah. now you're going into a plus right. So yeah. we need to just make sure that we manage we micromanage this now we like this is yeah. like a super crucial to, for all the millions of euros that that you're going to make in your life the next 50 grand will be the most important in my opinion because yeah. it's your own and it's the first 50 grand that's going to be your own that you don't need to pay you other people from right but what's kind of concerning me there's two things here right we have to just talk in detail about this job with this lady right we have to have a conversation yeah. now, and, and that 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 needs you to go off and take a course of action straight away, right? That's the first thing. Yeah. But secondly, you wouldn't have allowed someone to owe you three grand last year because you couldn't afford to allow them to owe you three grand last year, yeah? No, probably right. not. Yeah. No. So you can't start thinking already that you're going to allow people to owe you money when you don't even have money, so to speak. You're you're only yeah. you're gone from a negative. Yeah, you, you acted in such a way, right, that you got you from a negative into a into a plus, yeah. And yeah. you're doing that in a short space of time, and that's that's amazing, right? That's that's success in itself, right? So I don't want you to change anything about how you're operating in that instance. Like I I need you to be treating pennies like hostages here, yeah. I need you to okay. make sure no one owes you money because otherwise you're just gonna get lax again. Do you get me? Yeah. Without realizing, and that's what it is already. Like for you saying, "Asher, I let her owe me money." No, that's not the case. You shouldn't let her. To, like if she's gonna call you back to do another fifty grand's worth of work, well, she may as well call you back to do sixty grand's worth of work 
rather than you have 10 grand or 3 grand or 5 grand or whatever ever the number happens to be yeah, yeah, out yeah, on yeah. the job do you understand like you need like this is a crucial time and once we play our cards right here you know it will set you off on the right course and you'll be laughing so yeah. just summarise there you price the job 170 start to finish yeah client come back and says look I can't do 170 um, let me provide some of the materials which in, in if I be honest in some instances is an alarm bell in itself right then I went from 170 down to 100 for you correct yeah and now it's gone back up but we haven't actually pinned it down yeah yeah well the last figure I gave her was 142 right right Um. And it's like one of the only real reason I don't know exactly where I am at the moment is because I haven't actually been sitting every day and just looking at the numbers. Right. So when right? when is the next day you're going to look at them numbers? This evening. <laughs> You're not just saying as soon as I go, when no no when I go home this evening I'll look at the numbers. I have a VAT return to do for January and February and I'll be looking at the numbers because I'll be sitting in the office. Right. Um, and where are you tomorrow? I'm here on the job. Right. I would I would arrange a sit down with that client tomorrow. Yeah. Regardless. In fact, today I would arrange a sit down with that client we, for we, tomorrow. We've We've spoken today. Yes. And I actually just said to her, look, I need to just, because she's, she actually offered me, she wants to know how much money to, to give her, to give me today. <laughs> but, um, it's great. She comes, she comes to me trying to give me money, which Are you on is weekly fantastic, payments there, you know? I take, yeah, mostly, yeah, I take weekly payments. Right. I take me 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 break even point money and materials. That's what I've been taking for the last yeah every week every every week since I've been here. Right. Except okay. last week I didn't take a payment the previous week, but took two payments last week. You okay. know. That's that's fine. No, that's that's good. Um, it's just my concern there would be if you just lost track of that a little bit, and it would set you back. Yeah. Well, this is my own concern as well. Is that have I my finger on the pulse, you know, at this very second? And I can honestly say I don't because it's just after drifting a couple of days to a week where I'm not sitting with my head in the book, you know? Yeah, and isn't it crazy, like, because most people, and maybe yourself as well, will run their business in a manner where they won't be clued into the numbers forever. And since you start getting clued into the numbers and things are accelerating for you, now you realise, and it's it's not even a week gone that you're like, "Wow, I'm not I, I'm not clued into the numbers here for this week," and it's concerning you, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now look at that. Yeah, like that. that that's that's what news. it is. Like, and it's it's just it, keep keep on track of them every every week. Um, like, and I had I I I, I set up an account with. Uh, different builders providers right. just because I was getting all my materials off them and I was paying them as I went and I said look I have a few orders to get a few deliveries to get all the slabs and all the blocks and all that like just can you set it up as an account and then they didn't give me the invoices there and then yes so and and that wrecked me head and I'm, I'm I had a call with them this morning and I was like look I need them on the day and she's like, well, can we give them to you once a week? So I was like, okay, as long as it's once a week and that's it. Yeah. Because I, I I couldn't handle not knowing exactly where I was with them. Because yeah. the last two years, that's the way I've, I, I got away from having an account with anybody. And when I need materials, I pay for them straight away. But and why why are you not continuing everything to, so easier? Why why are you moving away from that now? And I, before you even answer that, I'll tell you why I'm asking that question there, right? Is that I'm always I'm always looking at a fella and saying, right, is 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 he on the way up or is he on the way down or is he flatlining? Is he growing? Is he going downhill or is he just staying the same? And I I always ask if you're if someone is on the way up, why change what's working for you already? So if yeah. you're ordering your materials and you're paying as you go, why stop doing that? Why did I stop doing that? Because um, 
so say for the blocks here, right? I wanted to have them here, right? So what I done was I rang a couple of different crowds, got prices. Now, here is a bit of a pain for getting the deliveries in because we have a bridge that's only 3.7 metres. So not everybody can come. So I rang to Saren, their lorries are 3.9, Rowl Sound's lorries is 3.9. So I had to get them off a merchant. It's like, right. Okay, so I get the blocks, the insulation, yada, yada, yada. I'm getting on my plumbing gear and all there as well. And it just, for keeping everything just kind of level that, that, that they're invoicing, you know, that they would send out the invoices because I was finding that, like, if I sent Jerry up, say, to get something, they mightn't give him an actual invoice. They would give him a till receipt and they would give him a collections docket, but they wouldn't give him an invoice receipt. Right, well, invoice. Well, let's, let's dive in here. That's I, I don't think that's a valid reason for you not... Sure, like, you're, you're now... like walk, Paying as you go works for you on the current basis, yeah? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, paying as you go, and you're saying that they're not giving him an invoice, right? And now you're on account, and they're still not giving you an invoice. So, so which, which one do you prefer? What, what I wanted, what I asked them to do when setting up an account for me was that they would send me the invoice out when I would get the materials. I could make a phone call to Sharon and I'd say, right, pay that invoice, there's the amount. And it was done within the hour rather than me have to give them like they're like i have two credit cards right so company credit cards yeah and there's a balance of 1500 euro on each one of them i okay. don't want any more than that yeah right but if i go into the the thing like all the blocks in the insulation cost three and a half grand here yeah so i wouldn't have had that kind of money on the cards to pay just them. do a transfer because like so, so if you just look at the the arrangement between your client and your company for a minute, yeah? This is a client here who is potentially not got enough money to do the job, right? But like but we don't we're not at any risk of not getting paid. There's a good relationship and all there, right? But it's yeah. basically it's basically a, a, a job that's going on where we're all in this together and we're trying to get as much as possible done without leaving anybody exposed. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're all in it together, right? So in that instance there, you don't want to be paying for anything unless the client has given you the money for it. Yeah. Is that, am I correct on that? Yeah, well, that, that that's how I'm doing it. Like, but you see, you were I, doing it and now you're moving away from it. And that's where the mistake is likely to happen, in my opinion, now. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I agree with you. I, I... I, I already got a price for the material. Yeah. Right? And I went to her and I says, right, I need X amount of money to cover that invoice. Right? Now, she wanted me to do the invoices that she would pay for them directly. But if, I, if they're going through my account, I'm adding my margin and I'm adding my VAT. Well, you're coordinating you know? them and you're getting them collected. Yeah, that's allowed. And you're responsible yeah. for them if something goes wrong. See, there, there's another it, thing. Exactly. It's better that she allows you to supply the materials because you're in charge of materials and labour. Oh yeah, like it's it's madness. I, mean, I, but yeah. So it started off that she wanted to do it, and I gave her a little list and let her walk away. But it, she understood then how difficult it was to get all these materials organized, count them up. Do you know, there's a lot of work goes into just actually ordering all the materials. Yes. Um, and when she started looking into that a little bit, she realized how much work was in it. So she's happy enough to let me do it. Um. So it's it's grand, and I'm putting me margin on, and I'm putting me bat on, and all as well with the world, you know. But we just so, like we, we just. Need but to I'm asking her. Yeah, go on. Well, I'm on. asking I'm asking her for the money before I pay the invoice, right? So I'm getting the money off that's, her. That's then not I'm, good then enough. I'm, then I'm ar- Derek. Then I'm ordering the stuff. Yeah. But the money's sitting in my in my account, and then I'm like. Just give me the invoice and the fucking pay already. And right. that's what's annoying me a bit. So I'm going to give them another couple of weeks. She told me she'd have all the invoices out weekly. 
uh, if it's smaller amounts, I asked them for it there and then, but there was there was a lot of different materials on it. Your man wanted to get keen prices for me on it. So I left them kind to do that. Right. Um, here's here's what I'm just thinking there. I, yeah, no, I agree with you. If, <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't told you what I'm thinking, yeah. But I just I said to you there, that's not good enough, but maybe that's the wrong warden there. You're getting paid before you order the materials. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. But getting paid after you order the materials, but before the invoice arrives out is not good. No, no, no. Right. Can, no, we, can we agree I... a little process here just to tighten up on this? Okay, let me just write this down. Yeah, I, I just think this would be a good idea here, right? Because, like, you're not in a position to cash flow this job, so you don't want to find yourself in a position where you're forced to do it. Yeah. So, what I would suggest is, number one, weekly payments, as you've been doing, right? Perfect. Yeah. Right? And in them weekly payments is the materials that you project to use for that project to use that week or the subbies you project to use plus your labour and, and any other costs and, and that's fine, right? Yeah. Just try place like see that three and a half grand order. You yeah. didn't wake up Tuesday morning at, at eight o'clock and then or get on site at Tuesday morning at eight o'clock and realise at nine o'clock, oh god, I need to put in the three and a half grand order or whatever the number was. You knew that order was coming, yeah? So just ask for a quotation and transfer the money across there and then. Because when you get the written quote, like if you get the written quotation, you know what the price is, you're not paying anymore. Transfer the money across. If you're waiting on the invoice to come in, it doesn't make a difference because you've got the written quotation and you've got the money from the client and you've paid it out of your account. Yeah. Like I don't think... Go ahead. That's what I've been trying to do. And then we just go, for instance, when, when I got the quotation for this first bit of material that I got, he put in, like, it should have been cavalry wall insulation and whatever, 10 bales of 80 mil cavalry wall insulation. And he sent out um, 10 bales of 80 mil floor insulation. Right. Now he has to go back, but that's what he would have quoted him before, because he's a genius, you know. He he quoted you for what you wanted, or he quoted he quote, you for what he gave He you? quoted me for the wrong. He quoted me for the wrong materials. Okay, so well I can't imagine I, there's I a would, massive price difference in both of them, or is there? Ah, uh, there would be. Yeah, like the 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 eighty mil floor insulation is there feet, eighty is it? fours. Yeah, it's four yeah, by two yeah, on the wall stuff it, with the wall toys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Four times too much insulation here. Oh, so you ordered sheets rather than square meters? I yes, I ordered. Well, no, we worked it out. I ordered, and I says to him, I says I want so many sheets, and he says, right, that's in packs. So I was like, well, then we want six, six or ten packs. You want sixty sheets, sixty sheets, you know. So they they sell it in packs. Yeah, and then he saw he said he actually quoted me then for sixty sheets of uh, eight by four. Right. Well, you know which what? Is a whole different. It's a whole different story. Let, but do you <laughs> know what? Let's the in the let's let's dive in here and just just fix these things one at a time. And I might even just take a note, right? Yeah. Because I don't want I don't want something going to miss here, right? No accounts, Dara. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to your. I recommend that you go back to no accounts. Yeah. Now, you don't have to stay at no accounts forever, but just as the business is, yeah? No accounts, no credit. Simple as that, yeah? So, if I use that as a cash account, so it's a pay-as-you-go account, and it's just to keep... When so, see, they you, have a you... record of all the transactions on their computer, as opposed to it being a cash transaction, it's a transaction with my company name on it. It's all, yeah, it's and all that's, the one day. That's, well, it just records that, and if there's ever an invoice lost, you can ring them up and say, I'm looking for that invoice. Well, well, hear, hear, hear me copy. out here, right? And I'm going to just do like a, a, a one, two, three, right? Yeah. Are you in agreement that no accounts and no credit will serve you better now if you can make it work, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, right. Number two, get quote, I'm writing this down here, yeah? Get quote yeah. by email 
from suppliers, yeah? Yeah. Simple as that. Don't ring them up. Send them an email. And when yeah. you're, like, that order, that mistake with the insulation would Doesn't possibly happen. not have happened if you emailed that order in. Yeah. Because you would have happened to be more specific and he would have happened to be more specific when he read it as well, yeah? Right? Yeah. Um, get quote by email from supplier with quote number. They give you a quote number, yeah? Yeah. Number three, pay by EFT using quote number as reference. There you go. Right? And if you have the invoice or you don't have the invoice at any point throughout the proceedings there, it doesn't make a difference because you've got a complete record of it. So number one, the money has left your account for the materials, but it won't have left your account for the materials until your client has paid you, yeah? Yeah. So the client is paying you, you're paying it out. Yeah. You've got a quote in writing from the suppliers. Yeah. And when you pay the suppliers, you're referencing the payment to the quotation number. Quote. Right. So you can now, like, see that bit of doubt that's creeping in there with you? That doubt is creeping in with you because the system that you're operating allows for a mistake to be made, yeah? Yeah. But if you go on this basis, what I just said to you there, you you what you probably won't know the numbers inside out as you as you don't know them now. But the system will not allow you to be in a situation where you are, where you have owed where you where you have ordered materials and you have and you've spent the money elsewhere. Yeah. So those three things just agree. No accounts, no credit. Go back to like you know you were seriously in the hole a short time ago, right? And you're at the doing an absolutely yeah. smashing <clears throat> job to get out of it, right? So don't change anything right now from that's got you from where you are to where you, from where you were to where, where you are now. Really can you can you see the logic from my end? Let's just say we take uh, that yeah. out of the equation for a minute. And I say to you, Dara, I'm at the main chatting to a lad, right? And t- between the jigs and the raids, we won't get into it now. He was in a lot of bother financially. But he's an absolute sound lad. He didn't burn anybody. He walked through it and he sorted it all out. And you know what he's doing now, Derek? He's changing things around. You'll be saying to me, why is he changing, Joe? Is it not working for him already? I'm like, yeah, it is. I don't know why he's changing. It's just that you're in the mix here now and sometimes you're too close to it to actually realise yeah. that, you know, maybe maybe you're making a mistake here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it just involves being that little bit more organised. Just a little bit more organised. Um, and once you set the supplier up as a as a payee on your bank, it's a two minute job to go in and make payments to them whenever you need to. Yeah, you know that's because if you do that, and we're having a chat now in a week's time, right? And you start the conversation like what you started there a minute ago, saying, "I'm a bit concerned about how this is gonna go on." And I say to you, "Are you getting credit from suppliers or, or materials?" And you're saying, "No." Are you only paying and are you only ordering materials and and subway work once you get paid off the client? Yes, I'm like okay, don't worry about it. Does that make sense? Like, does you've nothing to worry about yeah, because yeah. your system, your system is the system works. It's water, to, it's rock solid, it's tight, you know. Yeah. But at the minute now, the system is depending on you to be all over these things, and it's not the best way to operate, in my opinion, you know. Yeah. 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 You know? So, once that's done, right, I think the next thing we need to do, we need to have a conversation with our client. Hey, Mrs. Client, come here, listen. Can I talk to you for a minute? I'm just concerned that we went from a 170 to 100 to 140. Can we sit down and can you tell me how much money you have right now? Because I'm concerned that we're going to go too far and lads will be looking for money off me and I don't have the money or whatever else, you know. And they should tell you. Okay, so we've got a hundred grand now. We have fifty grand coming in the next four weeks. Okay, and where's the remainder coming? Oh, and that's not gonna. Okay, that's fine. Now you're in the picture. Yeah. They give you key dates, and then you can make yeah. a note of those dates, and you can go back then on them dates and say, "Did you get the next round of funding in?" Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Just that 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 that's in me head to do. Because the la well, like even the la, la I should have done this last week, but look, I didn't. So we we we'll go we we'll go with it this evening. Um, the the 
and I, I've already said it to her that I need to make sure that what's left to do is covered under her budget. Yes. Because yeah. if it's not, we have to rearrange what's left to do. Yeah, you need to leave the place sealed up, covered in, all that sort of jazz, yeah. you know? Get the outside plastered or whatever rather than do anything inside. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I would just go and, and tighten up with that, Dara, because th- there's one mistake that you're making there, if you don't mind me saying sorry, and that mistake is you are now moving away from something that has all, that's been proven to work for you. Yeah. And we don't want that to happen. No. You know, just go back there because, like, it was do or die for you over the last while because you hadn't, like, you know, you were going to fail and be out of business unless you handled this. And now you've got that sorted and already you're getting a little bit complacent, you know. Maybe complacent is too strong a word, but you're being not as careful as you were, you know. And that's, that worries me, you know. Yeah, well, the, the, you're, you're, you're right in what you're saying, like. Yeah, but look, it's a simple thing. Okay. We have a chat with John Bond, boom, it's done. Um, Come yeah. next Monday, this will be put away. The doubt would be gone out of your mind, and you will know that you need to tee up another job for this date or that date, whatever, and plow on, and then you'll bank a certain amount of money, and we'll just keep checking in to make sure that you're not veering away, and that the bank balance is growing, you know? Yeah. It's as simple as that. That's really Is there anything else that, that you want to ask me while we're here? No, not at the moment. No, that that was only, they were the things like, and... and whether it was I asked you or not, they were the things I needed to hear. Yeah, well, I'm you know, fucking because... telling you either way when you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they were the things I needed to hear. Like, you know, and that's 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 the whole that's the whole idea of this game. Yeah. Um, and you've another job to start in a couple of weeks, so I don't, I'm not concerned I've, about something yeah, else. You've plenty of work in the pipeline. A silly amount of work in the pipeline. I'm after almost getting a job. Already this morning, uh, number one here, and uh, it's a friend of this woman. She asked me to have a look around because oh, she's really? renovating the whole house, and I'm already after saving her about fifteen grand. Brilliant! How did you manage that? <laughs> you know I mean? So, the engineer—it's a big concrete house, so it's a mass concrete house, and there's an old extension on the front of it. So the engineer was like, "Take that wall down." and come out in line with the extension next door. And in order to get a nice bedroom, she put the bedrooms downstairs, in order to get a nice bedroom, we knock out the front wall of the concrete wall of the house, and we put a beam in and, and put in a stud then to divide up the rooms. So I was like, why, why are you doing that? Would you not just go out the extra 18 inches out the front when you're building the new extension and leave that front wall of the house there? Yeah. And then internal walls then. She doesn't have to move the internal wall, which again is a mass concrete wall. Another lo- lob of money saved doing oh, that, you good. know. Yeah, so, no, fair play. So that, but it's good that you can do that for her because that'll put you in the right, the right light with her and, uh, and you, you, you just, you'll stand a chance to, to win the job there. Now, that's that's good, you know. Yeah, look. I, I'd, say, I'd say after I called today, the job's in the bag. Brilliant. So I told her well, as well, look, look at it, it'll be July or August before I can go near it. And she was like, oh, Dad, can you build a wall for me first <laughs> to, 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 to keep the thing to keep the thing um, secure, you know, yeah. to secure up the, the job. So, uh, oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. I, probably, I probably have the job in the bag, just haven't got it signed on the dotted line yet. Oh, but you, you know? Look, you're doing a good job then. Now, look, at that's 100%. Well, look, there. I'll chat to you, you know, you'll have to get me an email for tonight because it's Thursday, either yeah. way, right? And yeah. let me know then by next Thursday that all this has gone away. And we jump on and we do another call in a couple of weeks. Whenever, look, whenever you want, just let me know. Yeah, I actually don't have another call booked in. I've got to book one in. Well, here, yeah. I'm going to hang up there now and I'll get you to go in and book a call straight away. Yeah. So that, uh, don't don't wait until you need the call. Just book it just to have it, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay, my man. Pleasure chatting to you today. No matter. Chat to you soon, my friend. Thanks, See you Joe. at the top. Bye bye. Okay, guys. So that was Dara Carolyn. Dara Carolyn of Crystal Clear Building Services. And Dara is a most genuine guy in the world. Um, I think, as you can gather from that conversation there. And I've been working on his business the last number of months. And he's he's doing really well. Like, he was he was doing well. Be- he was on the right track before he got got connected with myself and we're just helping him accelerate things and 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 just keep things in check so as you can see there i've been i'm kind of saying to him i'll go back and change this around because you know rule number one in business is don't lose money 
and you can i can hear the creeping in that he's getting a bit comfortable he's relaxed because the bills are paid there's a few quid in the bank now and he's talking about letting people owe money which i don't want him to do that at this point i don't think it suits him and his business at this point in time to allow people to owe him money um so guys we will leave it at that thank you very much for tuning in here today there goes another episode of the the tradesman survival guide podcast see you at the top so folks that concludes another episode of the tradesman survival guide podcast don't forget that all of the tactics and strategies discussed in today's podcast are from my book the tradesman survival guide which is available to buy online at www.joedoyle.ie forward slash tsg tsg being of course short for the tradesman survival guide 